Atlanta, you staying safe? Yes. Um, you know, Atlanta's kind of different. I don't know why they're not like as uh protective about COVID and everything, but people seem to just kind of be doing their own thing out here. But luckily I haven't gotten sick or really know anybody, you know, too close that's gotten sick. So all right, it's well, been blessings. All right. Blessings to you guys. Out here is I don't know if it's I like I don't know how to map it out. It's, like restaurants are open, but schools are closed and then schools open again and restaurants are closing. And I'm yeah. a teacher, so I'm like, I'm really feeling it. I'm really going through like the waves of it because, you know, with the school. What, what kind of teaching? I'm a, I'm an English teacher, but language English. So I teach the English language, ah. to, you know, the immigrants coming in, ESL. Oh, that's yes. super dope. Yeah, I love it. There I it love is. the kids. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. I mean, we have Washington's own, correct? Yes. Will what do you mean, like uh, where you were, where you were originally from? I'm originally from South Carolina. Oh, look at that! <laughs> oh, well, so, yeah. so why it says Washington in your bio? So Washington is my last name. That's my my last name. Wow, you know what? And I'm gonna I'm gonna read I'm gonna learn how to read a little bit better the next time. <laughs> oh good. <laughs> I'm going Washington's own way. What am I saying? I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> it's all good. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you're from North Carolina. South Carolina. South, South, South Carolina. Look at me. You just told me and I messed it up. So okay, so South Carolina's own. I mean, your list. You you said this is not an honor. We have people you worked with, Eminem, Wiz Khalifa, Big Crit, Yo Yellow Wolf. Yeah, that was like an <laughs> era. <laughs> that was such a dope era. I mean, I can't the game. I mean, and then we're gonna get into Josh Waters, but we don't want to spoil it just yet. We're gonna get into that yeah. during the interview. I mean, oh. I have to ask you. I have to start off with my classic question: Is where did the love for music and the game begin for you? Um, It's been in my life, you know, my whole life. My dad used to have these dope record collections and just used to play music. He was military, so we'd always have like weekend barbecues and stuff like that and families would come to the crib and it'd just be great music playing and all the fun was always based around some type of song or something, you know, people would be dancing and playing cards and stuff like that. So um, just my love for music kind of started there. And then as I got older into high school and things like that, like I just, you know, uh, was attracted to the kids that were, you know, into the creative sides of things. So um, we just started messing around, singing groups, producing, just all kinds of stuff. So, um, but yeah, it's a it was a true, like thing that just kind of landed on me. I wasn't like, I didn't have like a, a family member that was in music or anything, or like, you know, my dad didn't play or sing or nothing like that, but he just loved listening to dope music. And that kind of just kind of carried over to me. And I mean, there's, I, I feel like there's such a, when it comes to producers and you guys, to me, you guys are like the heartbeat behind, you know what I'm saying? So this is my body, okay. But my heart is just really pumping and keeping me moving, you know? So I feel like that's what you guys are to artists. So yeah. where did you, that ear, with that, that music, besides, you know, hearing it and growing up with it, what was that moment for you that you said, hold on, you know, you're tapping on your desk or you're, paying, you're, you're, you're hitting your pencils over here? Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, I was, uh, when I was in high school, I, I ended up in a singing group. And we were pretty good. I wouldn't say we were like great, but we were pretty good. Good <laughs> enough to get the attention of like a manager. And then she introduced us to an actual record producer. And I can just remember um, my first like real recording session with a real record producer. And immediately, like, I was just like, I want to do what he's doing. Like, I don't want to be on this side of the mic. I want to be... <laughs> you know, behind the scenes, pulling together the whole song and like recording it 
Um, and it just stuck with me like shortly after that, you know, it was like we did our group thing and I was already back over to the guy's house trying to learn how to do what he was doing. So, um, yeah, it just interested me more. You know, I felt like I could have like a, a, a more relaxing experience because being in front of the mic and in front of people, um, you got to kind of be built for that. You know, like that that level of vulnerability, I just wasn't really ready to be a part of. Um, and so to be behind the music and still be able to express myself, that was totally it for me. It was like, this is the shit. So I'm gonna go this route and just, just you know, try to become, you know, good at this part of it. And, and it just kept growing. It just snowballed from there. And that was, that was almost 20 something years ago. So. Wow. What a yeah. blessing. But you seem super genuine. So I'm sure, you know, that whole genuine way of you being, your, your background story too, same that family, you know, you stress the family, the barbecues, that's all a real good feeling with music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, it's a really good place to be for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so did you learn how to play any instruments? Do you play any specific instruments? Um, I'm, I'm not fluent on a lot of instruments, but I can play a uh, piano. I can play guitar. I can mess around on bass a little bit. Um, but I came up in an era of production where, I did master the art of like programming. Mm -hmm. So um, so I can play just enough to get like my ideas down. And then um, I just really learned how to program my music to a point where like you would never know that I didn't pick up an actual instrument sometimes, you know. But I would say that like my strongest instrument is keys. Um, I just kind of, it was one of those things where uh, when I was younger, we would break into the nearest college, the the USC, which was a college in my hometown, we would break into the music department and just go in the rooms where they had these uh, uh, baby grand pianos in every room where they would teach, you know, music school. But we would wait till 830 at night when all the classes were over and people weren't there. We would when they would normally be allowing the students to practice, but we would break in and actually go in there and practice. So Nobody knew we wasn't students, but you know, we wasn't supposed to be there. So <laughs> that's how I learned how to do the piano thing. And that just kind of transformed into, you know, being like my main source for my music production. And so now we have your list of artists, Eminem, Wiz Khalifa. How did this come about? Was it uh tell me, tell me, tell me. I'm like Well, it's it it was relationships. So um my first run in the business was I I moved from South Carolina to New York and I signed like onto this production company that um, this lady named Sylvia Robinson used to own. And she was the owner of Sugar Hill Records, which was like the first popular rap label um, back in the day with the Sugar Hill Gang. Yeah. Well, she was like in her seventies when I met her. So she was really not in the business, but she was just so well connected that she was just somebody you needed to know. Well, I did my first deal with her and I, this was my first experience in realizing that like music production could be a business um, because she had uh, a studio with like 10 rooms in it and each room had a different record producer in it. And that's all they did all day was write music and then turn it into her at the end of the week and she would shop the music to try to get it placed and stuff. Wow. So I learned the whole, there was a business behind this and I, I had no idea coming from South Carolina. I just wanted to make beats for my favorite rappers or whatever. Um, but while I was there, I was in the lobby one time and I ran into Yellow Wolf. At the time he was unsigned. He was doing the same thing I did. He had traveled up from Alabama to try to get on in New York. And I was up from South Carolina and we just spoke to each other in the lobby one day and from there, uh, I knew he was from the South just from our dialect. And so <laughs> immediately, like we just connected and we just started making this incredible music. But fast forward, that was the main source of all of the things that happened to me later because wow. my relationship with him is what made the relationships with the other people. So um, when Yellow Wolf, when we first did the Trump music project back in like 09 or 10 or some shit like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was a good time, but what happened was we ended up opening for uh, Wiz Khalifa on the uh, like Deal or No Deal tour, the Wake and Bacon tour, one of those I can't remember. We did both of those tours with him, 
And so from that, you know, my relationship with Wolf put me in position to build a relationship with Wiz. I worked with Wiz and, and that turned into our own thing. And then of course, uh, Yella signed on with Shady Records later on, which was my introduction to Eminem. So like this whole thing is all about relationships. Like everything that's ever happened uh, good to me and the relationships I have with artists are basically from just relationships and knowing people and just being like, hey, I met you here. Can I, you know, let's link, whatever. So all relationships, but it all kind of stems back from the very first relationship I built with Wolf before we even knew what the hell we were doing out here in the music business, so. Wow, that's so dope. And talking about relationships, what's your relationship with the father, Ja? Okay, so Ja is my guy. He is, we call him the father because that's exactly what he is. He's like a, <laughs> a mentor. Yep. Yeah, he's a, he's a really dope mentor. And I met him, again, another relationship that came from my works with Yella. But um, our first tour, he ended up coming on and being like our tour manager. And he was the guy who kind of like arranged all things for us as we were moving along. But in that, you know, he's the father. So he just kind of took on this role of being like big bro. And, you know, he's been doing this for a million years. Um, so he had answers for a lot of things that we oh, just didn't know everything. what was going on. <laughs> yeah, he knows everybody. He, um, you know, and just has a wealth of information based on like, just his own experiences, good and bad. That's what I love about him. Like he's seen so much of, you know, both sides of things that he can tell you what not to do, or he can, you know, try to lead you in the right direction and tell you what you should be doing to make it a better situation. But from that, you know, this guy's been in my life now, going on 10 years now. Wow. And in that time, like we've done all kinds of stuff, like, I mean, he's even at this point, he's also like my seafood now. Like we're taking, uh, you know, some Kung Fu classes from him because Amazing. he's he's like a, he's a real damn like expert in Kung Fu. It's the craziest shit. <laughs> but he's, he's only he's only put me on to like, you know, the, the mentality of the Kung Fu and all of that that goes behind it and be like water. And be just like water. That. <laughs> and just with that, you know what I'm saying? Right. It makes so much sense and it puts your mind in a different place when you really yeah. look at things, you know? Yeah. No, he's dope. And that's what I love about him. He's a given person. And like um, in 99% of my interactions with him is him giving us something that we didn't ask for or you know, know that we even need it. Like he was just there to present something positive to push us in the right direction. And so that's that's essentially it. Like the like he's just my guy. Like I truly just respect him in that way. And like, you know, if if he says it's a go, then it's a go for me. You know what I mean? And, yeah. <laughs> um and and to be honest, he treats me the same way, which I don't even know that I deserve that because I don't have as much experience as he does. But he, that's what I love about him. It's like, it doesn't matter who you are, or what you know, if he connects with you, then he respects you in that way. And like, you know, it's there to make sure you're getting what you signed up for. So Seriously. that's my dude. In fact, he's that. the reason, he's the reason I did get the Wiz record though, because um, we were working on Yella's album and he heard this, I sent the song to him and he was like, I'm sending it straight to Wiz and, and boom. <laughs> It was wow. that simple, yeah. Like really just one of what's, those love for love type things. What's one of your favorites from that time? I know they're all your babies and we don't want to single anything out, but what's one of your favorites from that time? Um, For me, Pop the Trunk is my favorite. Um, It was really the record that kind of defined us as being different. Um, But the way that record was, it, it changed my life. You know, it went, made me from being like a local producer that no one knew to like all of a sudden I'm getting interviews and doing things that I never thought I would be able to do. Um, it got me a publishing deal, it helped me make money. I mean, it, it changed my life. So it's certainly the one that I would say was defining in my career. Um, and so many people heard it. I have, you know, I run into people who, as soon as I, if somebody mentions Yellow Wolf or I mention Yellow Wolf, that's the song they mention and they don't, <laughs> It's like, and to know that I had something to do with that record is really like super special to me. Yeah. Oh man, you've done, I mean, 
I'm telling you, that was a, a whole era for me. <laughs> <laughs> for the hip hop game in general. Like that yeah. was such a pop and era. Okay, yeah. so now, um, all right. So now we're gonna get into, okay. You say something very, very important that you, okay, so you started out, you start, you have your little, um, you have your recording studio now, right? It's in yep. Atlanta. Yep. Can you talk to us about that? And then I'm going to talk about the mission behind this, because to me, this rang a bell for me. I love this. Yeah. Well, so um, a few years ago, I got a building. It's about 4,000 square feet out here. And um a we whole built this, building, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> a whole building. Anything. It's crazy. <laughs> and it was, it was a, it was an actual, it was a trip how it happened. But we got this empty building and built it out and turned it into three different recording studios. And a we have like a content studio. We have a gym. We have a full kitchen, full bathroom with like shower in it and the whole nine. Whoa. And we have like a, you know, like a couple office spaces and stuff for like um, any type of business that needs to take, that, you know, be done. Um, but it was really just an idea of like a space, creating a space for producers and um, creatives to, uh, to be able to come and do their thing. You know what I mean? And I didn't think about it until recently that it's low key a derivative of like my very first experience in music when I went to work for Sugar Hill for Sylvia Robinson. And that was years ago. But when I think about it now, I essentially have a very similar thing. Like I have a space where like I have producers in different rooms working and all we do is create music all day and, and you know, and we try to get it placed. But it's really dope. I've started a label out of here, the whole nine. So that's what it is. That's absolutely insane. It sounds like almost like a, a, a dorm, like a little mini college. You need to yeah. start working that. <laughs> yeah, uh, working it, is that that. it is that. We have like um, every, every quarter I bring in like different uh, interns and we give people opportunities here. Like they'll start, we've had producers come in and within 90 days we get them placed on albums, Amazing. you know. Yeah, so it's just one of those things. It's like a creative factory. Uh, right now, we specialize more that. in music. We specialize a little bit more in music than we do anything else, but it is all about a creative. It's just a creative environment. Now, in the bio I had read, it's um, a place where artists can escape the games of the industry. Yeah. And, oh, boy. Let me tell you, when I started radio, I was like, uh, I'm not for this. Like, I love the work. Yeah. I'm for the art. Yeah. All these games. I really like it. I got cold feet. I went, I mean, I did a good thing. I went back to school. I got my master's degree. And I got my degree, but still, it was like, it's scary. Yeah. You know? So, no. hearing you say that, explain that to me. Um, I just wanted to save space, you know, a place where people right. aren't like, you know, um, being vultures and trying to get everything from you. Like I let people work here with no uh, intent, you know? I mean, well, we have intent as far as like what we want to do with music, but we don't have any like agenda. And so I like that. I want to keep it that way. I, I like when people come here to just be able to get out whatever it was they wanted. And uh, we try to help them, you know, make it to where they can take it to the marketplace. So it's a building block, it's a building space. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, there's business, business goes down in here every day. You know, we rent the studios. So people come in that, that are not a part of um, what we would consider like our artist development side. They just come in, work, they, you know, book the time and get on. Uh, but we also have people who come here and they begin their creative process here. And we just help them cultivate that to, you know, into completion. And once that's done, then it's all good. We just out here like rooting for them and trying to push them out there and see what's going on. Wow, such a beautiful thing. I I was just talking to somebody recently that I feel like, you know, people say, oh, the state of hip hop and oh, hip hop is not what it used to be. But it takes people like you who are doing things like you're doing to basically cultivate that and really, you know, not only manifest it, but build that. Exactly what you said is a building block. It's yeah. one hand washing the other and it's, you know, let me help you out with this and let me listen to that sound. But what about this? And it's the, the whole teaching that goes behind it, you know? 
Yeah, like it's becoming, it's crazy because when I first did it, I was definitely one of a very few, but now it's starting to kind of become a thing now where people are building these creative spaces that um, cultivate a certain thing. Like I see artists actually, not music artists, but like visual artists, they're actually creating spaces now where people are coming together, you know, to make things collabing and doing things. And of course I've seen uh, several more studios in Atlanta, you know, approach the same uh, energy that we have where like, we just have this spot that people come to and we just like collab and make it happen. So I'm excited. I think this, I think this is the new wave. I think that, you know, um, there's so much collaboration of all types of art now, people are starting to come together and blend it. Yeah. So it's nothing to see like a album come out and it's in conjunction with, you know, a graphic, art, like a, a graffiti artist who's going to like their promotion and everything is all tied together. Yes. It's nothing to see that now because of, you know, spaces like this where that's what we do. Like when we make an album, you know, we talk about what we want to do bringing together all creative communities to participate in the delivery of some type of product. Oh man, I love it. All right, so now we're gonna get into Josh Waters and I gotta My get God. this number, we gotta get this number right. 52 songs, just yes. this, wait, this year that hasn't even ended yet? <laughs> yeah, it hasn't. We're, uh, to, uh, Wednesday, we drop another one. It's his 51st record uh, comes out um on wednesday and That's so i think we have one extra wednesday in this year so it would have been 53 i think but um but 52 is good enough you know what i mean but yeah well uh, it was a it was a lofty approach to uh putting out music um i'm a huge fan of people like russ who i think are like entrepreneurs in this business and like trendsetters and just you know like that and so um that's what we did. We just decided we were going to put out music every week. Um, we decided this, of course, before the pandemic. So we had no idea what was coming when we dropped the first one in January. But looking back on it now and being 50 something records in, I'm so glad that we did it because it was the one thing that helped us keep him uh, sort of relevant you know, yeah. during these times because the shows and all those things, they, that was taken from us. Yeah. So we couldn't do shows. Um, of course, he's a new uh, signee to my label. So I didn't have like this, I didn't have this system in place for him yet. Like we were like, oh my God, we just did a deal with an artist and we have no way of, you know, keeping, you know, keeping the energy up on him. like. Nobody knew him yet. You know, it was it's just a real struggle for us. But by doing the 52 records and have, you know, being committed to that, um, we were able to deliver a piece of content every single week for him. And it's just done some amazing things. Like we really got the word out that this guy is dope and like, you know, he's to be watched and he's next. And so I'm super excited about it. I probably won't do it again, <laughs> but... <laughs> But it was dope. It was dope. It was really dope to do it. And we have definitely completed it. Um, I can say that unless there's just some type of weird natural disaster, all 52 records will be out um, as of next Wednesday. That'll be the completion of this entire project. Wow, wow, wow. I was going to ask you, like, how did you survive during the pandemic and what kept you pushing? But I see. Well, I, I could see now what's kept yeah. you pushing. And, you know, and here's, here's the crazy thing. I know that most people think when you tell somebody you've got that much music coming out, the first thing they think is it can't be that good. It can't be that good. There's no way y'all delivered 52 records that were like super, super that good. Um, and I can say, you know, that this music is really that good. Um, I think that there may be moments where something is maybe for you or not for you. I was just but, gonna say that. But excellent, excellent songwriting, excellent production, excellent mixing, mastering, like the delivery of these, delivery of these records was uh, extremely professional and it's just a great musical journey for anybody who like wants to research him or check him out. This shit is just super dope, you know what I mean? And like I said, you know, it's a taste thing 
because you can't, everybody's not going to love everything. I've, I've That's never right. expected that. There's something and for also, everybody, you know? <laughs> right. And I also, I also wasn't trying to create any hit records right now with him, even though there are hits in this catalog. Uh, my biggest thing was, this was designed for him mostly. Uh, one of the things that I think people may not know, but, and I don't want them to overlook is that he just, in one year, he just delivered five albums worth of music, which, you know, as a, as a debut artist coming into the game, he's already going to have roughly, you know, 50, he has more than 50 records. Um, and that in the end should add up later. So the moment we do get a big record or we, we do get him signed to a major or something like that happens, like he's got this huge, you know, history behind him that should benefit him, you know? Yeah, Especially in the ownership realm and things like that. Like he's got stuff that he owns. So for and whatever he may have- that's what it takes to, is for somebody to love one thing so much that everything automatically just sounds like wow <laughs> exactly that's what's going to happen i think that i do think we've taken this year to find his sound um so we're going into album mode in january and um, we're actually supposed to be working on his album now but just so much is going on so um january uh will be when we officially start working on his album but we have a really dope plan for his album. And because of all of the music that we did, which was kind of all over the place, we have also sort of defined the direction we want to go with this new nice. album. And so this will be the official body of work that we've been, you know, just kind of building up to. And you know what's crazy? I always, like, I, when you ask artists, like, you know, when they're writing, or a lot of times artists have that many songs or more that they've worked on, that they've written, that they've put through, but it doesn't actually come out. You know, so the fact that you guys took the time to just make sure that everything he wrote right now and you put it out, I think it's genius, you know? Yeah. Like, I think it's yeah. something worth, you know, it's almost like like that work is definitely in the in the long run, that work is definitely gonna pay off. Yeah, that's the goal. That was the total goal for it. Like you know, I believe everything just kind of happens in steps. And so step one, we, we did it. This year, we'll come up with something else that's just like ridiculous and go for that. You know what I mean? And, and I think one of the things that we were able to prove is our consistency and our ability to finish. Um, I think a lot of labels are investing in people that can't deliver or don't finish well. You know what I mean? And I think that we want to just kind of provide a strong base, you know, for um, for what we want. And so anybody that wants to do business with us should be able to know that they can count on us to deliver on whatever we say we're going to do. So that was a huge part of it. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. And what's next for you guys and everything you got going? Um, so we just launched our label. It's called Bandwidth. Uh, it's spelled B-N-D-W-T-H. Um, it's Atlanta based right now. You know what I mean? And I just want to grow it. Like I'm a huge fan of like Rostrum records and, uh, I love strange music and just people who have done some really big things from an independent space. Um, and I just want to grow. I just want to grow to be that, you know, I love TDE. I love to see brands who can partner with larger brands later, but never lose their own identity type of brands. I love that. Yeah. Um, and so that's all we're working on. Like, I'm not trying to go, I'm not going to like, you know, talk you to death about trying to get a bag and all these different things. Like I just, for me, I just think talk we to have- Talk us a, about getting the bag. Yeah, come on. Like, you know how it is. I, I think that, I do hope that that's in our future, of course, but um, the bigger picture for me is legacy. Um, yes. We're actually like doing something that, you know, will last, you know? And so, like I was saying, if Josh, blows up or when Josh blows up, you know, he's got these 50, 60 records that he knows for a fact will always be, you know, something that he can keep and it'll be his legacy no matter where we go with this. So um, that's all I'm on. I'm just trying to get something that's going to be big. And like Atlanta is like a great place for labels to like incubate and grow. Like my favorite labels from Atlanta, of course, would be like LaFace and then, um, so so deaf yes. 
and then you know uh, Grand Hustle and QC and all these different people who are like they pop up in these incubator systems and next thing you know they own the world for like five <laughs> to ten years you know what I mean um look for bandwidth to be the next one for that like that's the move I'm on I um, hear that and I love it. I'm so excited. Yeah, so that's our goal. And we got a great facility for it and we just hope to grow it, you know? Oh man, I'm so excited. Now for all the younger producers that are out there and we're wanting to get into this whole game, uh, I want you to give them a, a little gem, a little piece of advice. Oh, uh, advice. I would say just try to find an artist that you believe in and like try to build that relationship and, and, and grow with that person musically. Um, the best place to get practice is where you're comfortable, you know, um, where you're not afraid to make mistakes and where it's okay to be different. Uh, do that with somebody who can like relate to you in that sense. And then once you master that, go out and, you know, make things happen with other artists. Cause it's a it's a big game. It's it's dangerous out here. Like people, no, I wouldn't say dangerous. It's scary. Um, you know, a lot of this game is based off of relationships, and yes. you know, you need cosigns. You need this, that, and the third. And the best way to do that is to do something great, or at least work on you know your craft to become great. And then once you get out here, you can just step right in and be able to play. Man, I love your passion. I love your energy. I can't wait to speak to Josh tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, Josh is dope. I think you're going to enjoy that conversation. I think this kid is um definitely something special. Nice. And again, willpower. Where'd you get that name from? Um, Actually, I got it because I, I had a rapper that I was working with some years ago, and he called me that, but he, it was because he just, you know, he felt like I just had that kind of, I had the will to do things. Like, um. I tend to say things and then we just do it. Um, you know, like my building was a something I willed in. Like we saw this empty space, it was nothing in here and we built it from the ground up. So like, wow. if you ever get to come see this studio or, or anyone tells you about it, it's in a beautiful facility that we built by hand. Like we literally got in here and put every piece of wood, every piece of sheetrock, that we did the floors, we ran the lights, all that. We did I it all. love that. Yeah, so that's where my name came from. I just tend to, you know, say things and then it's like, all right, well, now I said it, so we have to do it. And <laughs> so there it is. Yeah. I love it. I love it. It definitely goes with you and your whole genuine way of being. You're truly passionate. And I wish you guys the best of luck. You know, we, we always get, artists always get worried with record labels, managers, you know, they always, you know, to, to have to sign, but you just seem like you're coming, you're building a home, a place. Yeah. Yeah. Artists to feel at home. Yeah. Get comfortable and then let's go and let's make this music. Yeah. That's truly, that's truly inspiring. That's it. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Will Power. And I can't wait to speak to Josh tomorrow. And hopefully we'll speak real soon. Yeah, we will. Um, so I do what I do, just let him know. I guess you guys got that part figured out. What happened? What? With him meeting. He's on schedule to meet tomorrow. Okay, so we got it all scheduled up, so I can't <laughs> okay. wait. I'll be around. I might pop in on that. Interview. Yes, do that. I sent him the link, so just have him send you the link. There it is. There you go, and we'll all do. Right. It. Yes, do that. Do that. Definitely. Um, come in. It's going to be at five thirty, same time. Okay, cool. Well, okay. I'll see you then, and thank you for your time. This no, is dope. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. A true honor. All right, peace. Later.